I bet you have been praying this prayer your entire life. And I'm not even going to tell you to stop praying this prayer. I'm just going to challenge you today to pray this prayer, but make it better. Let's lean in. You'll know what I'm talking about. You've probably heard the phrase, Matthew, you you have not received it because you have not asked for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's in James. Seek it. <laughs> that's, that's in the Bible now. That's in James. That's in James. Seek and you will find. Right. Uh, knock right. and the door will be answered for you. I don't think there's anything wrong with probably the most common prayer that anybody ever prays, and that is asking God for things. Right. It's the supplication. It's mm-hmm. the request. Like you and I have been praying that prayer for our entire lives. And I think there's actually some power in it to be upfront with God, to be specific with God, to say, God, this is what I want. And the reason why I like that is because when this happens, then you'll know God is the one that gave it to you because I prayed for this thing specifically. And so I want to make sure that I give God all of the credit for it. Right. The only problem with coming to God with your, this is what I want, is sometimes it can turn God into like a a cosmic waiter. And God is just here. He's waiting on your prayers and he's got a pen. What can I get for you today, sir? Mm -hmm. And we tell him and he writes it down. He says, great, I'll get right on that. I'll bring it, I'll bring it to the table. And it's, it's self-seeking. It's kind of Mm -hmm. transactional with God. And so I don't, I don't want that to be all of our prayers. Let's definitely pray it. The God, uh, the Bible commands us to, but don't let that be all of your prayers. But here's another way that scares me about that, that I get nervous about telling God, this is what I want or I need. Unfortunately, in my life, there have been many times where I was a 100% confident that this is what I needed, right. and it was absolutely not what I needed. Yeah. Yep. I, I prayed prayers, and I said, God, give me this in my life, only to realize that this is really not what I wanted. Right. Give me this, and being very specific about it, God, open up this door for this job opportunity, only to realize that the job that I actually got was so much better and it it Mm -hmm. fit me so much more and it was so many more benefits. God, give me this opportunity. And then later on down the line, I saw what that opportunity looked like. And I was just like, oh shoot, I'm glad I didn't get that opportunity. Like, man, you you helped me out, God. I'm surprised, maybe a little bit frustrated, maybe a little bit disappointed in how often I believe in my mind, this is what I want, but it's really not the best. Yeah, we just don't know what's best for us. Yeah. I, mean, I think that's, I think about like a, a kid in a candy store. Sometimes that's viewed as a good thing because of how happy and joyful they are. But most of the time, trips to the candy store end in a temper tantrum. Like most of the time, <laughs> kids end up going, I want everything and I want it right now in my stomach. And, and the parents are like, no, you can't have all of this. Like we might get a little bag and you get to eat one piece now and then you get to eat a piece later when we're at home. But most of the time, you don't get everything you want. And that's a a good thing like we, we shouldn't just be like yeah sure you know eight-year-old you get to pick whatever you want to do in your life um, and, and so unless long- you're the fun uncle Yes, now that is true. You can that's do a, whatever you want when you're the, the uncle. That's the best part about being the uncle. Yep, <laughs> yep. You can do whatever you want to do. No discipline, no dirty diapers, yep. no none of that. No, no, no rules. No tantrum. Yeah. Just, you want to eat whatever you want to eat, go for it. You then, want a large Mountain Dew? Yeah. Do it. Yeah, your your mom and dad will pay the consequences, but not me. Who and cares? So, <laughs> yep, that's exactly right. No, but I mean, it's the same with us where we think we know what we want. Like, all right, I'm in this candy store. I can ask God for anything, and I know what I want. I know what's good, and so therefore, I'm just going to start walking around. And I'm just gonna start putting everything in this bag. Like, God, I know what's good for me. I know what I want. And if you give me this, then God, I'll give you all the praise. You know, yeah. we say that sometimes <laughs> and we mean it because we're like, I, like I'm, I'm ready. And, and it's a good thing to ask. But at the same time, it's, it's very presumptive to think like, oh yeah, I know what's best for me in my life. And if I get it, I'm going, that's going to be a good thing for me. But sometimes getting what God asked for or what you asked God for is not actually the best part. All right, so I, I'm not a country music fan. Do not, I couldn't name you five country music songs. Yep. The one that I, I can was thinking about it too. is related to this. You're yes, a big yes. country music fan. He, you know what I'm talking a, about? He's a wonderful theologian and Bible scholar. Garth Brooks <laughs> said, uh, <laughs> 
he wants saying sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayers. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I mean I've done that. I've thanked God for answered unanswered prayers before where you you're usually used to saying, God, thank you for giving me, you know, X, Y, Z. Thank you for giving me A, B, C. Like, thank you for giving me this and that. Like, I'm so thankful that I asked for it and you gave it to me. But sometimes I thank God for thank you for not giving me this. Like, I that's what I wanted. Whew, Garth Brooks was right. He said, sometimes <laughs> I thank God for unanswered prayers. I mean, there's been so many bullets dodged. Uh, and I think that that's so true in this in same way. It's like, I'm praying for this, but what I should be praying for is this or. Yeah. Not this only, but this or yeah. something better. Yeah, and that's the mindset. that I, I don't want you to stop praying for this. I want to challenge you to pray this, God, or something better. Right. Because your this might not be God's best. And we got to get to a point in our life where we don't, we don't want just this. We want God's best, even if it's not this. And so I think this or something better, Lord, is a way to take your prayers from transactional to actually being submissional. Like, all right, Lord, this is what I like. This is what I want. This is what I think is best. But honestly, I'm going to submit my desires to you And if you've got something better or something different or something that looks not what I'm praying for and it's your plan, then I'll take that. And even the declaration that it's better, like, God, if you say no to me and give me something else, I'm just admitting right now it is better because it comes from you and you care about us and you have a plan. So it's this or something better. This or something better prayer helps me to make sure that I'm not clinging to the this so tightly. It's like, God, give me this. This is what, just this. Like, don't worry about anything, nothing over here. Like, just just this, Lord. I mean, that's the cosmic waiter. You know, that's I'm looking at the menu. I like what this looks like. It sounds good. They've even got a little picture of it at the top of the menu. Man, it looks good. And you're just laying at that waiter going, this is what I want. Don't bring me the other thing. Like, don't, don't, don't bring me that. You know, when I'm at the steakhouse, don't bring me chicken. Don't bring me the sausage. Don't bring me the pork. Bring me the steak. Right. Like don't, you know, don't mess around with anything else. And sometimes that's how we, we treat God. I want this. But instead, what if we really saw God as knowing best? God is sovereign over everything. God is all wise. Then we'd really be able to trust him and say this or whatever you have, God, I trust is going to be better. Yep. So here's my challenge for you today. I want you to pray the same prayer that you've been praying. Ask for this. But throw on the end, God, it's this or something better. God, if you've got a different door to open up, if you've got a different opportunity, if you have a different answer that maybe I don't see, that maybe I haven't even thought of yet, that you know, Lord, is better, that you know is going to fit me, that you know is going to not only answer this prayer, but is going to set me up for the next stage in my life and whatever you'd like to do. God, I am asking you for this or something better. Pray for this like you always have, but add God or whatever you'd have that's better in your plan, in your will. That's an act of submission in prayer. That's an admission on your part that maybe I don't know best, God, but I know that you do. And not only do you know what's best, but you will tell me what's best. And if you and I'd be willing to be praying those types of prayers, this or something better, Uh, I think it'll revolutionize the way that you view the way that God answers your prayers and open up opportunities and doors in your life. 